Hey, Archdeacon Mitch here. Uh, today we're going to do a quick breakdown of the movie The Menu, which I watched last night. And I have to tell you that it's an excellent film. I really enjoyed it. Um, if you want to enjoy the movie and then come back here afterward, uh, that might be a good idea. Perhaps you've already seen it, but this spoiler alert. So I'm going to be giving away the whole key to what the movie is all about. The Menu is directed by Mark Malode. It stars Ralph Fiennes as Julian Slowick, Anna Taylor-Joy as Margot Miller, and Nicholas Holt as Tyler. It also has Judith Light and John Leguizamo and a bunch of other good actors and actresses. What's the movie about? Well, it's about a group of people who go to a remote island uh, to experience the cooking of an incredible chef who has reached a point where his cooking is no longer meaningful to him. He's become disillusioned, and he's sort of passed through this, and now he's going to create the ultimate dinner. If you, if you have not seen the movie, you probably won't understand this, but if you have seen the movie, you definitely will. So, um, this entire movie is biblical. Julian Slowick is Jesus, or he's the Antichrist, if you will. It's also a double play, because it would be Julian as in Julian the Apostate. So, he is, he is half Jesus figure and half apostate figure. Margot Mills is the prostitute who comes with Tyler and doesn't really belong there, and she's kind of an outsider. Margot Mills is obviously Mary Magdalene. Uh, this is not a coincidence at all, and there's no coincidence that she's the one, the only one that survives at the end of the film. But I want to point out to you the biblical parallels right off the bat. So this is the Last Supper. It's the Last Supper for every single person in this film except for Mary Magdalene, that is. You will notice that in one of the courses, there is no bread. The bread is missing. What is missing from what is happening is the bread. Um, that's, a, again, another deeply biblical message. Uh, you'll notice that Tyler, the disillusioned cult member who still doesn't quite get it, uh, when he finally has an opportunity to cook, he cannot cook. In fact, he cannot cook lamb. Uh, he is unable to cook the lamb, uh, which means he's unable to prepare the supper of the lamb, and that's also significant. The name of the restaurant that uh, Julian, the Christ figure, operates is Hawthorne, and it is his crowning achievement. So, in fact, he has a crown of thorns. You will notice that there are 11 diners, just as there are 11 apostles. There are like five tables or something, and uh, one of the tables has three, so that makes 11 diners. All of the major sins are enumerated amongst the diners. Uh, greed, sin, envy, all of that. You will notice that one of the three embezzlers that's at one of the tables, his name is Soren, and that's definitely a reference to Soren Kierkegaard, the ex existentialist philosopher. Many have found the works of Soren Kierkegaard inspirational, but he's also known as the probably the first existentialist philosopher, and the existentialists are the first step on the... On the uh, slope that ultimately leads philosophically to nihilism and postmodernism. The end of the film is interesting. Each person gets a mantle of marshmallows and they get a chocolate cap and they're toasted into living s'mores. This is obviously a comment on the uh, descent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is a fire. Each person, you can see the icons, you look at the, in any of the old depictions, there is a flame of fire over the heads of um, each of the disciples. 
but the flame that's going to be over the head of these diners who just don't understand what's really at play is going to be the fire of um, the immolation fire that Julian uh, sets. And he stands in the center at the end and, and it immolates himself and others. When uh, Margot, uh, played by Anna Taylor Joy, the way that she she escapes, her escape from this world of, of nihilism and uh, fake enjoyment and uh, lack of spirit, if you will, is when it's about love. Love is the answer. And so she looks at Julian and she says, "This I want to send my food back. It's, it's loveless. There's no love in this food. And she says she's still hungry. And that is a direct reference to Matthew 5, 6. Um, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And that's what she wants, is she wants righteousness. Because um, her job as a service worker, as a sex worker, is loveless. And she wants love, too. And so she understands that Julian has lost his passion and his love for food. Uh, and this is a food is a metaphor for the Eucharist. It's a metaphor in this film for the love of God, for accepting the message of God. And so that's what really breaks him open. And you can see the love in Julian's face as he prepares this cheeseburger for here for her. And he serves it to her with love. Um, all of this really comes together. Now, if you look at John 6, so you can see it clearly. And it's, it's the very beginning of the Bread of Life discourse. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. Now, there was only one boat that leads to the island in this movie. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And he answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. And then it goes on from there. So once the love dawns on Julian, then he lets her go, and she is free to go. And then Margot Miller goes, and she gets on the boat, and then she's able to make her way safely off of the island. This food isn't real food. The food that's served is, is, is this ornamental uh, sort of uh, haute couture food, it's not real food. And I want to point you to John 6, 54 through 55. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. The menu is a deeply Christian movie, and I very much enjoyed its message, which is that Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.